Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are gonna talk about dealing with the emotional side of alopecia. I've been wanting to record this video for a while. I've gotten a ton of requests from you guys. So we're gonna get right into it. Before we do, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want more videos from me and give me a thumbs up if you end up liking this video. So let's get right into it. So whenever it comes to losing anything, there are five stages of grief that a person goes through to deal with or cope with the loss. And it's no different when it comes to alopecia because you are losing, well, your hair, which is a really big part of who you are as a person. I know that when I first started going through it, I, I kind of had difficulty with allowing myself to feel all the emotions and feel the sadness over losing my hair because I, I kind of felt inside like it was coming from a place of vanity. And I talked to my best friend. I didn't tell her early on about the alopecia because she has a daughter who has cystic fibrosis and cystic fibrosis, it's a very, very serious disease. So I didn't want to talk to her about it because I didn't want to burden her with my problems and the fact that I was losing my hair, which didn't seem like as nearly as big of a deal of what she was already going through. But when I did end up telling her about it, she was mad at me that I didn't tell her earlier because what she said to me, and this is what really hit home, was that there is something going on with you, something going on inside your body that is causing your hair to fall out. That's a very serious thing. So of course I'm going to be concerned about you and your health. When she said that, that really sort of helped me realize that, you know what, this is actually a very serious thing and it's not something to just take lightly. So when it comes to the five stages of grief, the first few ones are anger and denial. And obviously you're gonna feel these things. You're gonna be upset about the fact that it's happening to you. It's gonna be really scary in the beginning, but the more research you do, the more you'll better understand why this started in the first place. Um, and I truly honestly believe that things happen in your life the way that they're supposed to happen. There's a reason you're going through the things that you're going through. If you're going through alopecia right now, it's a signal that something's not right either in your body, in your stress levels, something is not right in your life and you need to pay closer to attention to it. That's the angle that I kind of took when um, I was going through it. It was kind of like alarm bells going off in my head that, you know, there's something seriously wrong here and we need to get to the bottom of it. And I know it's so easy to get caught up in that whole feeling of like, why did it happen to me? But you know what? That's not actually gonna solve any problems. It's so much more empowering to take a look at it from a non-victim perspective. As much as you really want to just sort of wallow in that sort of pain, try not to spend too much time there. I mean, I'm not trying to tell you that it's wrong to be upset. Trust me, I was very upset. I definitely shed a lot of tears over what was going on with me, but it's not productive to sit in that space. So instead of getting stuck in that place, what I would suggest you do is to do as much research as you possibly can. I was on the internet looking at every single website that I could possibly read on alopecia. I watched every single YouTube video that I could watch on the subject. I started finding out more things about alopecia, but that stress could be a cause of alopecia. So I started investigating, well, how do you minimize your stress? How do you deal with stress? I started reading up on the fact that diet could be linked to alopecia. So I found out about the autoimmune protocol and I started reading up on that. I ordered the book, which I will link down below for you, but I read the book, like which was full of so much scientific jargon that it was a little bit hard to understand at times, but I read the whole thing because I was just like, I need to know everything that I can possibly know so that I can get down to the bottom of what's going on with me and try to figure out how to stop it from happening and how to regrow my hair, which if you guys have seen my other videos, you know that most of my hair has now grown back. I have one patch that is filling in still, but it's gotten so much better than it was before and I had actually lost 70% of my hairs. So I truly believe when you research these things and you start to implement all of these sort of possible solutions in your life, it's going to make it so much better for you. At the same time, I do wanna say that it is a little scary because you there's no guarantee that these things are gonna work. I mean, it could happen that you could try all these things and it doesn't actually stop the alopecia but it doesn't make sense not to try it because if you don't try it you're never gonna know whether it could have helped you or not so try to put all of your energy into trying to solve the root of the problem what's going on inside of your body inside of your mind and inside of your life that has caused the alopecia to happen in the first place and then another thing that you can do that will help you is to look at the worst case scenario 
Now, if the worst case scenario is that you completely lose your hair, what are things that you could possibly do if that would ended up being the case? So I started to think about different things that could possibly happen. If my eyebrows were to fall out, well, I could always do microblading and I would have artificial brows. If my eyelashes fell out, well, I could use false lashes. Um, if like, you know, I have no hair on my head. The technology when it comes to wigs these days has completely improved over the years. And there are some pretty nice looking wigs out there. So I went to a store and I tried on some of their wigs just to see what it would look like and how it would feel. And yeah, I'm not gonna lie. It was a little traumatizing to put that wig on and to think that this could possibly be my life. But I'd rather look at it from that perspective and kind of prepare myself mentally rather than to just sort of sit in the pain and the misery. So just look at the worst case scenario and try to see the most positive things that you could possibly do to make yourself feel better if that were the case. So you want to prepare yourself mentally for the worst case scenario, but you want to hope for the best and do all the research and be equipped and try everything that you can possibly try and put all of your focus and your energy into that rather than sitting in the pain. I think that is so much more productive and that's going to make your emotions and your ability to deal with what's going on with you a lot easier on you. It's also really important to talk about it. Now, this was the thing that really, really helped me. As you guys know, I've been doing these videos for about five years now. I've been on social media forever, I have my blog, and I put myself out there so you guys see me and you see what I look like. Now, for me, it wasn't really something that I could hide from you. But going back to the whole thing of things happen in your life the way that they're supposed to, well, thinking about the fact that it's happened to me and the fact that I have this platform, well, it kind of was a no-brainer that I should try to help as many people as I can to open up about this. And it, back then it wasn't even about the fact that you could stop your hair from falling out and that there's ways to try to get your hair to regrow. Because at that point when I thought to post the first video of my alopecia story, I think my hair had just stopped falling out and there was little hairs growing back in, but I didn't know that they were gonna turn into these hair and that all of my hair was gonna start growing back eventually. All I knew was that there was a little bit of hope at the end of the tunnel and I just wanted to get a conversation going with all of you guys and to try to get you to open up and talk about what you're going through because Holding it in is never a good thing. Talking about it really helps you sort of deal with and process the emotions. And when you're talking with somebody else, they can give you a different perspective on what's going on with you and what could possibly happen. So it's so, so, so important to be open and to talk to your friends or your family. If you can't talk to your friends or family, talk to your doctor. There's tons of people online that are going through the same thing. There's forums that are out there. You can even message me. A lot of you have reached out to me and I promise I will try to help you as much as I possibly can. So I really want you guys to just focus on what you can do to make your situation better. I hope this video helps you guys. If you guys have any requests for videos, just let me know in the comments below and I will see you guys next week with another video. Take care.